Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and um, thank you for joining the European Police Congress. Also, huge thank you for the organizer to making this uh, event uh, possible. Today, we would like to share with you how safety and efficiency is being elevated with the help of drone technology and how this innovative technology is going to change the way law enforcement works. Before we start, let me quickly introduce myself again. My name is Sergei Georgiev, and at DJI, I'm helping and working together with public safety entities like police and firefighters across Europe for the past six years to help them start and develop their drone program. We also have two special guests today from Belgian police and from Icelandic police who would like to share with you their drone experience in just a few minutes. Now, most of you might not know DJI. Um, DJI is the world leading manufacturer for civilian drone technology. And we already have more than 14,000 employees all over the world. And every day, our aim is to make the world a better place with our technology. Our technology already has changed many industries and helped millions of people around the globe during um, their holidays by providing them a view from the sky, Hollywood professionals, uh, and agriculture sector. But last but not least, also law enforcement. We believe that with innovation and technology, we can solve current challenges of police across the globe, such as limited manpower, rising cost, the safety of the police officers, rapid deployment, and digitalization. In fact, the innovation come from within police. More than a decade ago, we saw first police officers bringing their hobby drone to work and started innovating. They got the support from their police chiefs and therefore started the first drone projects to prove that this technology is going to help them. Today, more than a decade later, we have already seen that enterprise drones are widely adopted within police and are already an indispensable tool uh, for their daily work. In fact, even last year, we saw then again innovators from police starting innovating again with a drone in a box solutions such as the DJI dock to allow them operate remotely in any location. But let's have a quick overview of the few advantages which drones provide over traditional methods, such as decrease in airborne cost. In many situations in a geographical area, helicopters, police helicopters, are just not available. In such situations, drones can help them by reducing cost, also with almost limited, uh, sorry, with almost uh, zero CO2 emissions compared to helicopters, and rapid deployment from any location. Drones have been also used by police officers to take pictures and videos from above after a crime accident or a car accident, and by this reducing the risk of evidence contamination. We also have seen a lot of public safety entities utilizing drone for crowd control monitoring, such as big events like football matches, or demonstrations. And last but not least, we have seen a lot of use of our technology for search and rescue missions to help save vulnerable people. Yet, we saw great adoption over the past decade. There are still many countries and many police organizations who hasn't adopted this new technology. And we think there are a few misconceptions we would like to address today. Over the years, we have heard so many times that drones are just toys. That's not true. Enterprise drones are made for industrial applications, and they serve police officers, firefighters across the globe due to their unique features, such as longer flight time, better cameras, thermal imaging capabilities. And unlike hobby drones, enterprise drones are made to withstand harsh weather environments to be operated in rain and dust and in snow. Another misconception is that drones are dangerous. This is not true. And at DJI, 
our top priority is air safety. We have equipped our products with redundant sensors, with obstacle avoidance sensors, with dual batteries to make them even more safe and reliable. And enterprise drones undergo a lot of testing and quality control measurements to ensure that reliability. And last but not least, a very important topic on data security. I would like to highlight that at DJI, our focus is to develop best-in-class hardware products. Data and data collection is not our business. We are not in the business of collecting or analyzing any of your data. In fact, we have provided full data control to our users. Moreover, we introduced encryption to that data and allowed police officers and enterprise customers to use our products completely offline. And these features have been verified by multiple third parties over the years, such as Tube Germany. And now my part is over. I would like to invite Bart from Belgian police on the stage so he can share his drone experience uh, in the recent years. Bart. Uh, thank you, Sergey. My name is Bart Tramakers. I'm a superintendent at the local police of uh, Karma in Belgium. I'm also a drone pilot since 2014, and I'm a senior lecturer at the local police academy where we train police officers to become drone pilots. In our police zone, drones have been used for various police purposes since 2011. One of our most important missions is crowd control during major events. Monitoring a crowd from the sky gives a better overview to our superior officers, allowing more adequate decisions to be made in the context of safety of those present, but also for the safety of our colleagues. During these events, we also monitor traffic before and after the event. We support other disciplines, such as fire departments and ambulance services. According to them, we have been already able to save several lives this way. Our police zone borders Netherlands and Germany is not too far away either. On our territory, there are many illegal cannabis plantations and after receiving a court order, we map them by tomography to complete our files. When our teams raid these properties, we provide assistance from the air with our drones. When they are briefed in the morning, we are already on the scene in what we call stealth mode to provide live footages. On several occasions, we have been able to follow fleeing suspects and to intercept them. Our police zone covers a great wooded area where we have already had to provide drone assistance in the search for missing persons with mostly positive, positive results. Currently, we are in the startup phase of using tactical indoor drones of the Avata type, where we use CQB tactics. When we have a search warrant, we are responsible for searching a premises from which a suspect must be taken out. Since we can locate the suspect, we greatly reduce the risk of serious injury to our colleagues. Our team is specialized in assisting our leadership during high-risk football games. We make use of two or three drones uh, during these services. The first team searches four records and follows our high-risk fans uh, both before and after the game. The second team and third team, fo excuse me, the second and the first team focuses on the visiting fans and traffic management. What you're seeing now were images came, that came into our command room through a live feed. These images can also be seen by all our colleagues on their mobile devices, and it allows them to respond quickly and according to police standards. On your left, you will see a footage of a confrontation between our high-risk fans and the fans of a visiting team. The visiting team uh, fans made their buses stop to engage in confrontation. Our leadership saw immediately what was happening and gave orders to separate the groups and push them back into the buses. Our chief decided, based on these footages, that 140 fans had to be uh, arrested and were not allowed to enter the stadium. 
On the right, you see how we uh, transfer the funds in groups of five to our cell complex. These actions happened out of the view of the state and cameras. We were in charge of securing our colleagues. The, pr the presence of drone teams in our zone offers many advantages. For example, we can be activated within 15 minutes, much quicker than our air support unit, who is located in Brussels. Some of our pilots even carry the drone in their vehicles during their daily operations. Because we are a team of 10 pilots, we are 100% deployable. We see less damage to police equipment and fewer injuries to our colleagues. These images can also be used as evidence in court and for debriefing moments afterwards. As you can see, a drone team is a very small financial cost compared to a fully operational air support unit. As mentioned earlier, we started our drone team mid-2011 in response to riots in a city where we could, not support, uh, we, we could not count on air support. More than 30 colleagues were injured and we lost a lot of police equipment. To compare, during the last major uh, riot we had last year, only one police officer got in injured and we didn't lose any equipment because of the drone. In 2012, we already carried out our first operational missions, well, not comparable to our applications today. In 2016, under influence of our team, the training for U.S. state operators started in the local police academy. And based on our expertise, more than 400 police officers and firefighters are trained uh, at this moment. Our team consists of 10 pilots, and we are definitely going for expansion in the future as more and more new applications arise. We are currently in the process of launching a drone shield in our police zone, which will focus on the safety of our citizens and on the safety of our colleagues. We would also like to integrate AI into our existing programs, and we are still continuing to search for new tactics. To end, I want to quote my police chief. He always says, our police zone will no longer have any operation without the deployment of our drone team. I thank you. Thank you, Bart. Great insights, uh, especially regarding crowd control and uh, the football matches. I think this is a very relevant topic um, in the upcoming months. Now I would like to um, invite on stage uh, Arne Thor so he can share his insight from Icelandic police. Arne. Thank you, Sergei. Thank you, Bart. Dear guests, uh, I'm Arne Thor Eilsson. I'm the drone program manager at the National Commissioner of the Icelandic Police. I'm uh, responsible for coordinating uh, drone programs for all police districts in Iceland. Um, Icelandic police have been using drones since 2016. Uh, since then, it has been scaled to a nationwide useful, usefulness in many situations, mainly in field and investigation work, special operation, security, search and rescue, etc. Drone technology has evolved fast and we have evolved with it. With the eruption in Reykjanes Peninsula in 2021, and how the situation has shifted from volcanic eruption from rural areas, which was pretty safe for people, to more near populated and infrastructure places in November 2023. The use of drones and drone teams has been a daily work tool for civil protection and emergency management to assess and review the situation from a safe distance. In 2023, we improved safety and security for in infrastructure teams, law enforcement and emergency services as we put DJI Dock in the town of Grindavik. DJI Dock is a drone in a box solution. It can be operated remotely and live over the internet, both manually and automated by pre-programmed flight routes. It's a rocket waterproof docking station with a drone inside it. The drone is also reliable with multiple cameras like zoom camera and thermal camera. 
At the time of installation and setup, the town was empty of residences, where around 3,600 people needed to evacuate their homes and businesses because of threat from volcanic eruption possible under the town. We installed the DJI attack under strict safety and security measures in the town, where we need to have gas masks at hand and carry oxygen sensors and always be in contact with police communication center. Having a remotely operated drone in a location where it could be controlled and monitor situation from safety has proven, proven to be very valuable and important. Since the installation of the DJI dock, in addition to the police drone teams, we have done numerous flight missions, around 200 flights with the DJI dock and over 250 hours for the drone police teams. Here we can see a picture of police drone pilot operating a drone from inside of a vehicle. And the video on the right is a thermal map of a crack or valley that runs through the town of Grindavik. The map was made autonomously with a DJI dock drone. That way, we always have uh, up-to-date maps in our database. Here we can see volcanic eruption that happened in January 2024, where the DJI dock was the first to confirm the eruption and give the civil protection and the scientists ice in the sky from the first minute. The live video feed from the drone could give us where the eruption occurred, how big was the eruption, where does the lava stream lead, and what was in danger. Also, multiple users could watch the live video feed from the drone so law enforcement, scientists, and civil protection management could assess their risk based on the video feed. The video on the right is where the drone was used to monitor the evacuation of the town of Grindavik in the middle of the night. It helped us assess the process of the evacuation and whether it's not going according to the plan. As for the safety around the volcanic eruption near the populated places, we are in the middle of planning to add another remote option as we are putting DJI dock near the Blue Lagoon and the geothermal plant in Svarsenki. We are still operating drone teams to respond to any activity or assistance related to, to those natural disasters that we are facing at the moment. What I can say for sure is that the drones have never been as important as of now in this situation for us to maintain security and situational awareness and keep people, first responders, workers, or those who need to be in that area safe. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Arner. I would like to finish today's presentation with the fact that we are super proud at DJI that with the help of our drones over the recent years, more than 1,000 people have been saved by public safety officers and uh, by your officers around the globe with the help of drone. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much for uh, your report about the development of drones but also for the very impressive reports and pictures from the daily work with drones. Good luck for you, all the best. Thank you very much for being here.